You're listening to Chrysalis Colored, the podcast. Hello, this is Jorun from Norway and Christine in Canada with a podcast about color analysis and how it applies to you in a practical way. We'll talk about how to use your colors to make your days brighter, your wardrobe more enjoyable, and your life easier. We'll talk about topics that we find interesting, and we encourage you to submit your questions. A podcast listing is available at chrysaliscolor.com under the podcasts tab. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're very excited for this episode number 34 about what makes a sci art color analysis unique. Joining us is Jennifer Connolly, style blogger and writer of the blog awellstyledlife.com. And we're going to link to that in the show notes. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. It's wonderful to meet you both. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jennifer. I am so looking forward to our conversation. What exactly does your work involve? I know you're a blogger and a stylist. Yes, I I started in fashion uh, many years ago, managing boutiques and helping women get dressed. And before long, they began asking me to come into their homes and help them with their wardrobes. So I decided that I would get some professional training and uh, got certified to be as an image consultant and opened, hang out my shingle, opened my business. But then when the economy tanked, um, I decided to close my business and started my blog so that I could reach a wider audience and share what I was charging for free online. <laughs> um, and the, evol- it's blogged, the blog has evolved since 2012, but the focus still remains the same. I'm still trying to help women navigate modern fashion that we're presented with so we can dress with confidence. Is your audience mature women, Jennifer, or has it evolved as you've matured? It's always focused on the over 50 audience because I think we struggle with invisibility as we age and it's a, it can be a very painful thing to deal with. Um, and dressing well is a powerful tool to uh, help you maintain your visibility. So I share tips and tools and things that I know that can help them navigate it and, and find what works for them in the stores, because most stuff in the stores seems just sort of focused on younger, the younger audience. And we're not invisible. We're here. Mm-hmm. We are here. Yeah. And, and you probably find that y- you, you understand better how to speak to your audience by what they tell you, what their shopping experiences and so on. Yes. Yes. And I've had the same experiences in the stores. Exactly. Yeah. That's the same with me. It was, if it was hard for me, it was hard for everybody. So what, what can we do to help women? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I find it also, it's easier to talk to women that are our age and yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. But Jennifer, t- tell us about your own color training and experience. I'm curious about that. Yeah. So as part of my training through AICI, the Association of International um, Image Consultants, uh, there was a large section of it on color analysis and the ability to do color analysis on women. And um, we painted people's complexions. It was fairly advanced and, and very sophisticated. So when I graduated and got certified, um, I decided that I really did not feel confident doing color analysis. I didn't feel that even with my training, I really had the skill or the knack to do it. So I focused on um, just proportion and style and shape and kind of left color where it was and didn't, didn't try to be the expert because I didn't feel that I was. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's interesting that you, but you did feel confident about shape and proportion and mm-hmm fit and so on. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. I think you do have to teach color very differently. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But um, is color analysis something that you use and talk about in your blog Uh, or, or how do you, how do you approach color in your blog? I do talk about the properties of color that I feel confident about. And I do talk about things that, um, you know, we are all recognizing as we get older, or most of us, and that, you know, black is too harsh on many of our faces as we get older and that sort of thing. But I don't, um, I don't try to tell people what season they are, or um, mm-hmm. even what season I am, because there, 
appears to be some question about that. <laughs> Which we will touch on. Yes, well, um, speaking of that, let's talk about the elephant in the room. It's like today's show, it's, it's kind of about having been typed as lots of different seasons in a variety of color analysis systems, Jennifer. Yes, yes. We, um, when we all got locked down um, a couple of years ago, there, there seemed to be a, a larger interest in color analysis. My readers were asking about it. They were curious about it. Many of them mentioned that they were getting virtual color analyses. And I, I got curious and wondered about the viability of it. And since many of them had decided to go gray, they couldn't get to their stylist, that was also changing what was flattering on them. So I decided that I would uh, get several and share the results with them. So the first virtual color analysis didn't designate a season for me, but they decided that I was bright, cool, and light. Um, and the second one decided that I was a soft summer. The third uh, consultation decided that I was a soft autumn and the fourth one designated me as a floral spring. So with, with my experience with color, if I was confused, I knew that my readers were, were going to be struggling. So I kept looking for answers. And the, the way that these were done is that I would grab pieces of fabric from around the house, hold them up and take a picture of myself. But lighting changes, cameras change, monitors change. And I would be sending these pictures. And even I could see that they weren't accurate. And I would tell the analyst, this is not accurate. This is not really what I look like but it didn't matter. They needed to come to a decision based on what I could provide with them. Mm. And it wasn't accurate. So um, at that point I kept looking around and I, I stumbled upon site art and I read everything I could find about it. I, I was fascinated. Uh, and I found um, several analysts and emailed them excitedly. Would you do an analysis on me? Every single one of them refused. They all said they could not do a color analysis on me virtually, that they had to drape me. And I thought, okay, that's integrity. Yeah. I need to check, I need to <laughs> check into this more. I need to find out more about sci art. Yeah. Because they weren't, they even, even at the loss of business and cost to their business, they wouldn't do it. Mm. May I ask, Jen, um, I'm not sure if your hair is colored or silvered, or in between, but did you find it difficult to manage the changing hair color? You're, are you in a hair color transition stage? Is that true to say? Or I not? am. It is. It is. I, I, I am a, I'm a light blonde, but I had been adding highlights and lowlights. And during the lockdown, that none of that was happening. So I, it was growing out. So that was changing as well on my head. It was actually getting darker rather than really? lighter. I, I expected it to get lighter and silver, but that kind of wasn't happening. Maybe you have kind of mixed, you know, like I think Yorin has darker and lighter tones in her silver hair, and I'm sure I will too. Did you find yes. it hard to manage your color choices, cosmetics or clothing as your hair color was changing? Or did it seem to you, um, you just kept doing what you always had done that you felt worked? I was doing fine until I got all these strange consultations <laughs> telling me you're an autumn, you're yes. a spring, you're a this, you're a that. You look fabulous in this color. And I would hold it up and look in the mirror and think, I look like a corpse in this color. <laughs> this can't be right. Yeah, yeah. Or one of my favorites, you're too complicated to analyze. I, I <laughs> oh, hear that a fair yes. bit. And women have I, said to me, am I too complicated? No, no, you're, no, no, no. Oh. That's what I started to assume was yes. that I must be difficult to analyze because no one came up with the same answer. Right, right, right enough. And it, it, it's not, there's nothing difficult to analyze about you. I could certainly, to be fair, acknowledge some people might be, but, um, but I can't imagine that you would be. It's just that how is a you know, a surgeon going to do great surgery with a knife and fork. It it's, <laughs> has more to do with what's going on on that their side than what's going on on your side. And I don't mean to speak without, you know, I only have very little information about your experiences, but 
that's usually the situation, I think. And w- but women do the same thing. I must be too complicated. Mm-hmm. And it, I don't know, it kind of feeds into, am I different? Is there something wrong with me? You know, am I exaggerating? Do you think? I, it sounds so um, hurtful. And being women, the natural reaction is, oh, it must be me. It yeah. must be something wrong with me. And I feel so sad that that that's happened um, to you. Yeah, and yeah. You and, and you have no tools to solve it. That this this oh. a situation I really get very frustrated being in myself is knowing I have something that needs fixing and don't not knowing where to turn to fix it. Mm. Um, well, the problem also is that when you hire a color analyst, you're hiring an expert. And so if if you get varying answers from the experts, can they all be wrong or is it you? And, mm-hmm. and that's, that's yeah. very tough on your confidence. Yep. And you really need to be able to trust that your analyst is getting it right. Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about all this in today's episode and in the next one too, because there's a, a level of fairness where you could see four doctors and get four diagnoses. And I mean, everybody's doing their best and they have different perceptions. And that's just what being human and working with humans is. But I kind of think we could do better. Um, Jen, before lockdown, how many times did you have color analyses before the virtual ones? Um, I had two done in person. Um, both, unfortunately, I was the subject matter. So I was used as the example to teach a class. So I did not see what was happening with the colors on my face. Mm. Other people, the students were standing in front of me and they saw it, but I didn't see it. So I was just given a palette and told this is what it is. You weren't like in front of a mirror because how I'm thinking, how could the analysts see you? They were all standing in a group around me, staring at me like I was in a Petri dish. (laughs) <laughs> as I laugh, um, who was changing the drapes? Another analyst was changing the drapes. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking about how could yeah. she see you to teach to the student, you know, but yeah. And actually they did not use drapes. They used small swatches that they held against my skin and my eyes and my hair. Oh, like paint um, chips, you mean? Like little, yeah, like little, they were little fabric um, swatches, mm. but yes. Yes, hmm. there weren't large drapes. Interesting. Interesting. Yes, really. But really, there is there is a big elephant here. It's like the confusion that you're being made to feel that you're all kinds of seasons according to who looks at you and doesn't mm-hmm. let you see what they're seeing. Um, I feel more than a little disturbed about how our profession is communicating. And I, I'm not surprised, you know, that people might be a little concerned about credibility. Yeah. You know, I'm also think that whenever we buy anything, there is, um, there's accountability maybe on both sides of the equation. So for the consumer, if I were the consumer, I would be okay with different names of seasons between mm-hmm. brands, the floral spring and the bright, whatever it is. Yeah, clear, um, clear winter and bright winter. Yeah, that to me is within the realm of credible. I know it's frustrating for consumers who don't know the difference between these brands. To them, it's all you know, color analysis and 10 doctors could very well tell you you're diabetic and use the same terminology. Um, But this is a bit different. And I would also be okay with and even expect some difference between the palettes. But there should be recognizable overlap, whatever the name of the season is, doesn't matter, there should be at least some colors that are the same. I don't know how much disparity between brands is acceptable? How much is okay Mm. that consumers should just expect or acknowledge? It's a difficult question to answer really, but it's very important to think about that. Mm. And and, you know, we we should expect some differences. Uh, When I've had a client who's been analyzed before in a different system, if, if possible, I encourage her to not let me know what that season was because I don't want to be swayed by it. But um, we go through the draping and we arrive at the season, which she and I see together. And then afterwards, when we have our conversation, if she's brought her other palettes, she'll bring it out, the, the previous 
draping palettes and then we look at them and we can compare with the one she got from me and usually it hasn't happened very often but when it has you know we see some connection uh, we see some colors that are we can see why they've been chosen um but when it, with an online color analysis i mean virtually on screens then i'd expect the results to differ a lot from an in-person color analysis or I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a big difference yeah. because you know digital photos and all that well it's what jennifer said you, you know yourself that you're sending a picture that doesn't look like you yeah right? and yeah. Uh, i figure with online analysis the person could be told they're any season i i expect no consistency at all jennifer mm -hmm. what's your take on this from a, a consumer point of view um well, that I wasted a fair amount of money doing this <laughs> and that I'm not the only one doing it. Mm. And that the, the price you pay is not always what worth the value of what you get. I take pictures of myself in a dressing room every week to show clothing to women. And I can be standing in the same dressing room in the same lighting and the picture of the background will be a different color based on what I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. So my phone is changing everything. Huge. I even, I even drew that to one of the analysts attention and they said that that didn't matter. So their, their, their confidence level allowed them to not really pay attention to the fact that there were things that they couldn't control. Yeah. Or, um, perhaps also gives analysts who do control the background and the lighting. I mean, it's the standard of the profession. Even if you're painting cars, you're working in little gray rooms with specific lights because mm -hmm. otherwise things aren't reproducible, I think. exactly. Um, but I don't think you wasted your money. I wouldn't say that because you, it opens the windows of how you see yourself. I mean, you know, maybe you are some kind of soft summer, maybe you are some kind of spring. So you've had a kind of taste of what the flavor of that might be. And I think it makes people more open-minded. They don't reject, no, I, I'm sure I'm a winter. I was told I'm a winter. You, you, you kind of, oh yeah, someone saw that before. What were they looking at? And it becomes a, the purpose is maybe to just understand yourself better. What were they looking at? And now that I can see it, how am I going to use it? And so it's a, maybe you could call it a more well-rounded education. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> you'll be like a, you'll have a university career in color analysis. Yeah. And from what I understand of your system, that's what you do is you educate the client. You, you don't just pronounce here you are, this is what you are and hand the person the palette and expect them to understand why mm -hmm. and how to use it. Mm -hmm. Sciart um, seems to educate the client, which is, I think invaluable. Yeah, I, you know, for me, it's really important for people to participate in the experience. And why are you this season? Why are you not some other season? And how are you going to make this work and, and let it stay with you through all the feedback you're going to get positive and negative? Um, mm -hmm. What do you do you think you're in? Is that would you agree that you it's it's really important for people to be part of their own analysis and if you wear glasses then you're going to take them on and put them on put it take them off and put them on and take them off and put them on but you got to see it so got to see yeah. something it's 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 to me it's i feel so strongly about that it is almost worthless if we don't because yeah. why a, I because you you aren't given a season mm. you are shown you see yes and you are yeah, you were a season when you walked in the room. Yeah. Jen, um, the systems that you've used with, with the one that Jorn and I use, the SciArt system, the colors are in the skin and that's where our focus is. Has your experience been that most systems are looking at skin, hair, eyes or? All of them. Every single one was hair, skin and eyes. I had to send a close-up picture of my eye. Um, and they needed to see my hair. Now, of course, my hair has a multitude of colors and, mm -hmm. and it can be, we can dye our hair. So everything mm -hmm. focused on those three features, the hair, the skin, and the eyes, and what made your eyes pop or what made your, you know, your hair look better. It, it didn't focus on your complexion, your skin. Yeah, yeah. The, so that's what's um, different that I find about SciArt is you are just focusing on 
the skin. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, the skin, you only need to focus on the skin. You could cover your hair and close your eyes and we could still do the analysis perfectly well because all your colors, purples, reds, greens, the whole thing, they are already in your skin. And if you know what you're looking for, you can get the, the season very well there. Eyes and hair are not wrong. They're just partial representations. There's no blood in hair. So you got no hemoglobin. You've got no reds, you know. And uh, it's not that we don't consider eyes and hair. It's how we look at them, meaning how we, what we look for. Same with mouth, nose, facial structure. We're looking at each one separately and then the whole face together. So let me give you an example with eyes. I'd never say a color is flattering without saying how I decided that. It can't be my opinion. That's just one more problem for the woman to deal with or one more question. So I would look at an eye, which eyes in focus between these two drapes. So I'm comparing two big pieces of color, which eyes in focus, this one, this one, which is a shinier eye, which eye repeats the natural pigmentation, uh, which drape, pardon me, repeats the natural colors in the eye. Where's the white of the eye clean? What are the changes in lash color? So there's an awful lot of detail. And the analyst is trained in how to interpret each one of them. Different questions with the nose, different questions with the lips. But you know, when the hair is natural, it's not that I cover it unless it's really attention catching, but I understand the boundaries of the information I could get from it. And then again, once you know the colors in the skin, the hair and the eyes are just going to fall into place. And, you know, with clients, I wouldn't go through all of that. Most of the time I teach color analysis. So with a client, the process and the decisions are abbreviated because they just want to know what are my better choices? How am I going to go out and shop for, for better things? And um, you want to know your season. You want to know better color choices in your life. And I think that's what clients hire us to do, not do a three-hour technical um, session with them. I would say, and as you say, to feel confident in the colors that you've chosen and you've never gotten that confidence, Jennifer. No, cause I've never seen it. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never had the drapes come off and had it explained to me, mm -hmm. this is what I'm seeing happening to your, to your complexion. And that that's what I need to, for me to be yeah. confident that those colors are right. I need to be convinced is and it I need to see it. Is it yeah. done in complete silence or are they kind of just offering opinions like your eyes pop and you just look breathtaking and it doesn't get more specific than that? It's, it's done. Um, yeah. It's, it's the zoom calls are, are very short. I'm not quite sure what they are for, but the draping is done on the, on the pictures. I mean, mm -hmm. I was holding up, I would grab my grandson's sweatshirt. I would grab a mm. tea towel. I would grab a tablecloth, just grabbing all the colors I could find mm. so that I could take pictures. Um, and um, one, one analyst didn't require me to uh, have no makeup on. So of course that would change my skin dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, so there was no science to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't, Yorin, we wouldn't use the word flattering. I don't think, right? Um, well, we, we would use it because it's a word that's kind of common um, when we want to say that it looks nice, but we use it with caution because flattering, it just kind of sounds less sincere. What, what we really specifically are looking for is that with the right colors, the, the right colors bring you into focus. It's like a camera that you turning the whatever you call it in English that round thing and then suddenly the lens yes and then you you turn it in this blurry and suddenly it kind of snaps into focus and I feel that with the, the right drape you get to be in focus you come you step forward you get present you you look visible and to be be in focus that's kind of a universal impartial thing everybody can see it and well, yeah, both in the during the draping and then also later in person, and you look present and in focus, and instead of vague and insignificant, mm -hmm. yeah, invisible, as Jen says. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I learned about sci art, just from what I've read, is that you recognize um, neutral seasons, and I I think that's pretty critical. It, you know, there's, there are still plenty of systems around that just give you 
four seasons, winter, spring, summer, autumn. And you, it's very hard to type everyone into four seasons and not recognize a neutral. Mm -hmm. So from what I've read, there are more neutrals, which makes complete sense to me than there are true, true seasons. Um, but, you know, this is all just what I've read about sci art. I'm, I'm excited to find out and, and to actually get, get tested, get draped and find mm -hmm. out. Well, we're all old enough here at the three of us to remember in the eighties where with color me beautiful, yes. which was my first exposure to color analysis. There were only four seasons. It's like two cool and two warm seasons. And I think that's part, part of what made me kind of lose faith in color analysis for a long time, because I, I thought it was a winter, but then I thought, yeah, maybe not quite. And, and it's speaking of snapping into focus, it all fell into place when I discovered SciArt and discovered that there is a system that honors that, that, you know, uh, the majority of people out there are actually neutrals. And uh, yeah, well, there, I, I guess we have we have four we have those four um, uh, true seasons: the two cool and the two warm. But then we have eight neutral seasons. So there's twice as many neutral seasons. And um, I know other systems have way more than twelve seasons. They have some some systems even that I've heard about even have they just create a new season for each individual person. And um, I guess, am I right when I say that being completely warm or cool, it applies to only like a third or a quarter of the population, isn't that? Something yeah. like that, Christine, yeah. Yeah, and and, I would say so. And I, I'm not surprised that people can lose confidence and commitment to only four choices if you don't, if you just kind of forget about those blended groups. Yeah. Jennifer, you've said a few times that um, I wanted to ask you about, first of all, that you you have come to understand that people are not either warm or cool, just as Yaron said. And I, as I, I became a color analyst after those days, and my only training has been with SciArt, but I have an impression that back in the day, Analysts were either much more aware of warm what happens when colors are too warm than too cool. So as soon as they saw a little bit of yellow, it was right away bad and too many people got put into cool seasons. How did you, um, how did you come to realize the importance of neutral seasons? I didn't fit into either warm or cool. Uh, I, I, I can wear colors that are a blend of warm and cool mm. and, um, you know, certain colors are too icy and not, not flattering the same with things that are too warm. Um, but it just makes sense to me. I mean, you can't slot women into, you know, just a few different style types We're we're all unique. And if you strip away the women's uniqueness by trying to slot them into a narrow category, it gets painful mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't recognize how unique we each are. Mm -hmm. So all of these different analyses, there were a few colors on each palette that were the same. Some were very different, um, but the ones that were the same, which is why I, I, I am guessing that I'm in a neutral um, territory is that they were sort of a little bit warm and a little bit cool. I could be wrong because I'm not an expert, but I, I sense that I am in that neutral quadrants, those neutral mm -hmm. quadrants. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just playing the odds, you probably are. It'll be interesting to, to find out. When mm -hmm. you read, I know you've mentioned to Yoren and I also that uh, in your reading, you came upon the fact that SciArt covers the hair. We, yes. we just cover it in a neutral gray scarf. Did you, I often get emails or people saying, well, why would you do that? Because hair is such an important part of appearance. Um, did you feel doubtful when you read about that? Or what was your reaction? It, it actually made a lot of sense to me to cover the hair. I mean, I, I know so few women who, you know, haven't colored their hair and that has to have a huge impact. So if you're just looking at the skin, 
removing the, the visual of the hair has got to make it easier for you to see what, what happens with the skin. And one analyst had me put a white towel over my head. Well, mm. that immediately changed my co complexion because the white was advancing and it's bright and it immediately changed how my skin looked in the pictures. Mm -hmm. So having a neutral gray over the hair makes complete sense to me. Mm -hmm. I like what Yoren said too about the SIRT system. It's not really trying to change anybody. It's just trying mm -hmm. to discover who you actually are. And I think you've said that as well, Jennifer, that nobody's trying to tell you to wear one color to compensate for something else about you. It's just mm -hmm. trying to find out, just trying to let you be, you know, who you actually are. And I mean, you've been a spring in some systems and you bring it been a summer in other systems, but mm -hmm. at the end, I was of an iridescent winter years and years and years ago, someone gave me iridescent winter. Oh. So I have actually, now that I think of it, been all four. <laughs> It'll um. be really interesting, you know, because I could buy a, uh, well, I could buy a few options, um, which, and it'll just be super interesting to, to see, to find out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, one um, color is suggested because I have such pink skin that I wear warm colors to tone down um, the pinkness mm -hmm. in my skin. So that goes against what mm -hmm. SciArt appears to do, yeah. which is to bring you into focus by bringing, by having you, matching you with colors that are in harmony with you. Because yeah, harmony yeah. is so important. It, it completely is. It should create any kind of holistic look and to help a person move away, move towards themselves rather than away from. And sometimes women will say, well, I, I still have this blemish. Oh, yeah, well, you know, you got a blemish. <laughs> let's not right. make it any redder or darker, but let's also not try to get rid of it because a price will be paid. We're going to have to get rid of your feature definition and, and other things. Right. Um, and let's let, and let's say you look fabulous in that blouse instead of what a fabulous blouse. Let's have you be the focus that that mm. that would be my ultimate goal would yes. be to have colors that made me the focus. Yeah, very mm. much so. You know what it also was for me is that I finally kind of had permission to just be the person that I am and I could give up all the people I was trying to be and told I was supposed to be and um, just, just figure out who is it that I am and then express that to the world. I, um, as opposed to, you know, this is me rather than this is how I'm supposed to look or was told to look, or this is this trend that I'm working this week. And, and it totally can be done. The colors in us are, are so related. They're not random at all. And so it's just a matter of wearing clothes and makeup that are related in the same way, in the same way. Mm. I believe you, Christine, have said many times, it's a catchphrase that um, wear the colors that you are. Uh, I yeah. love that. And, and to, be, to be lifted forward and being allowed to be who you are, it's, yeah. it's uh, color analysis, the draping. It's, I'm, I feel very privileged to do it with women because it's a very strong if there are sometimes very strong emotions when when you get to that very point, strong client sees herself mm -hmm. or himself mm -hmm. as who he really is or she really is it's like i get goosebumps just thinking about it it, it really is special yeah i um and you know i just did a video on youtube with about wearing colors with silver hair and i'll link it in the show notes we ha I had betty white as our person and it talked a little bit about the season can accept uh, colors from other seasons once you understand what your color keys are and also what colors that you can leave behind and yeah I don't think you're in would you agree that you have to have opinions or some kind of magical color eye you just need to have a system system yes and and a training that helps you use that system yeah yeah so that because uh, when you're draping, we make the comparisons according to a very specific sequence and, and system. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then during that draping, we see that person in one color as, and we see her as much more in focus than in mm. the other color. And we compare this one's better mm. than that, this one's better than that. And we don't have to have opinions because the drapes 
the drapes show us they reveal it and it's not like a magical eye or anything like that but well we look we look at the person and uh, we see it and then we make sure the client sees the same thing we do and we point out what's happening we're just kind mm -hmm. of showing it so that the client sees it they see mm -hmm. it that's another distinction that I think um, I, I, as I understand sci art is, is that you, you show the client so that they, they recognize it in themselves. I have, I have readers who don't want color palettes. They, they feel like they'll be limited by them. Mm -hmm. They don't want someone telling them what color to wear, but that's not what this is about. This is revealing what's the most flattering and you can make your own choice but it's revealing what is the most flattering for you so that you can feel confident. Yes, I can pick this up and know that that's going to look great on me, mm -hmm. but you're not just dictating to them. True. You're, you're showing it to them. Right. And you see it. I just had a client uh, do a follow-up talk and she says, she was so relieved because like now she goes into the shops and she says, I already know to eliminate like 90% of the 95% of the clothes that are hanging there. And it's just so much easier because uh, one of the main parts of learning and seeing this is to see the colors that you look great in, but also to learn to stay away from other colors because you've seen, mm -hmm. <laughs> seen how they look and it gives you the confidence to say, no, thanks, not for me. Yeah, yeah. I agree entirely. I, I'm perfectly willing to narrow my playing field with clothing or colors or food. Once I have a good enough reason, I'm not going to do it without mm -hmm. some kind of facts or data, but give me a good enough reason. Like this is what you look like in this pink. And this mm -hmm. is what you look like in this pink. They're both pink. You get to wear every single color. But are you really sure you want to put money down for this first one when you could pick up the second one? And I think many people, they just don't have that good enough reason. They've never seen what could be. And so it all sounds kind of restricted. Uh, but once you see what's possible, the reaction tends to be, oh, yeah, OK, I got it. You know, it's, <laughs> this is not hard, that hard to see. So you get new information and then whatever, wearing whatever we like, it just doesn't make sense anymore. Well, I think you just made an interesting point too, is that you're, you're really broadening their options. It, you know, yes. it used to be the old, the older systems would be, you can't wear yellow. And so yes. they would just strike that off their, their options where there is a yellow for them. Mm -hmm. It has to be the right yellow to be the most flattering. So rather than narrow their choices, you're broadening their choices and you're, you're laser tuning them so that they can easily choose the correct ones. But I think it's, it sounds to me like it's gonna open their options more, uh, that they will be able to wear the green and the brown and the blue mm -hmm. and the yellows and, and the reds, uh, they'll just be in the flattering shades and they won't mm -hmm. be making the, the mistake of putting something on that makes them look like death warmed over. Mm -hmm. This is true. And it's not like you, you can't wear red, it's just, you need to- Which one? Which one? It's only a matter of that. And, and yellow, any, you, everybody can wear all kinds of colors. It's just the, whether, what kind of, is it, a, is it a muted one? Is it a warmer one? Is it a mm -hmm. brighter one? Is it a darker one? Is it a lighter one? You, you have your yellow, your red, everything. So yes, you're limited in one way, but you're just so much more expanded in another way. Mm -hmm. So much freer in another way. Jennifer, right. how do you buy makeup? I know you've got a few color palettes, but you don't have your, your one answer yet. How do you buy makeup? Uh, I, I just wing it. <laughs> yeah. I wing it. I, I, I break <laughs> the rules. I put all the palettes together. And if something's on all of them, I figure it's a go. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds good to me. Yeah. Anyway, anyway but you'd find one that's on all of them. But I guess you yeah, could. there are. Yeah, there are some that are not. There are some outliers that are just completely wrong. Right. That's funny. Well, Jennifer, you you, you say with with makeup, you use all your fans, and do you do do you do that with clothes shopping too? You you know, how do you deal with all these fans when you go shopping? I carry a tote bag. <laughs> I have a purse that goes in a tote bag. I have one fan in a Ziploc bag. I have three other pan fans in the little sleeves that they came in. And if I'm curious and concerned, if I don't feel that it's a good fit, I will take them all out, lay them out and see if there's a similarity. 
You do it in the store? Uh-huh. You do this yeah. in, right there at the end of the store. So you've kind of practiced at this, right? You have a system, whatever it may be. And uh, yeah, super. And I put a lot of clothes on because I put on clothes that are obviously not my colors to share yeah. with my readers Yeah. because I don't limit myself to just what flatters me. Mm-hmm. But then when I'm going to buy something, I want to buy what flatters me. And yeah. I want to be sure that, that it, it is a flattering color on me. Yeah. Yeah. Do you wear a lot of prints? I don't wear. No. No, how come? Um, I don't know. I just have never felt comfortable in them. I will wear some geom- geometrics. I like stripes. I have a few checks. Um, I just have never been comfortable wearing prints. Um, they don't mm-hmm. seem elegant enough for me, yeah. I suppose. Super interesting. Super interesting. interesting. And, you know, the idea of the four palettes, I mean, it's not, it, it's kind of smart, right? Because it's like shopping with a bunch of different opinions. You, you have, you're mm-hmm. getting, you can ask, you can have lots of places to double check, let's say, or to verify. So instead of How- having four, four, four different friends with you in the fitting yeah. room, you have four different palettes who, who are your friends. That's yes, right. which I actually never recommend you shop and ask your girlfriends <laughs> what they like, because they like what they like. They don't yes. necessarily like what is most flattering on you. No, no. So you're I think a lot of times along. when women say, I, lo- that, I love that top, what they're saying is, I think it would look really good on me. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And sales clerks as well. You just yeah. cannot trust a sales clerk to oh, no. have your best interest at heart because they yeah. are, they're either on a commission basis or mm-hmm. they really have no training or skill yeah. and they're just going by their own taste. What, what yeah. appeals to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And for them, it's like fresh produce. They get new, fresh stuff in every week, every month. And they're, they're seeing these clothes every day and they're attracted to whatever is the current the phase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. So, Jennifer and Christine, we've kind of scratched the surface of Jennifer's many color analysis experiences in this episode. And... I'm very excited about this. In our next episode, we're going to hear more from Jennifer. And we'll get back to what that is. But for now, thank you so much, Jennifer, for being with us today. Thank you for having me, ladies. This has been very exciting for me. I'm I'm so excited to learn more about Sci Art and thrilled to have discovered it. Right. And we're thrilled to be able to have this conversation with you. So Bye, everybody, and we'll listen in next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.